everybody. It is December 18, 2018, 9.58 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And seems to be a recurring event nowadays. I start working on my weather updates and then all of a sudden, boom, another earthquake, another one in the Pacific Ring of Fire, another strong one. Um, as we see here, 6.2. I got another website pulled up, says 6.3. When this one popped up, it was a 6.7. So once again, we have had the initial, uh, magnitude, uh, given to us and then changed within an hour. As you can see right here, this quake was an hour and nine minutes ago. Uh, we are, what was the depth of this, uh... This puppy right here, 10 kilometers, usually that's a, uh, that's the lowest this chart will read. It won't say anything under 10 kilometers, so it could have been a little more shallow than that. But you can see right here, right on the fault line, this is considered the ring of fire. We click on this, let's check out some of the stats here. Um, wasn't expecting many people to report feeling it, being that it was out in the ocean. The, um, significance here is that it's in the Pacific Ring of Fire, another... Uh, high 6, as this did show up as a 6.7. Uh, anything over 6.5 is definitely a high 6, very strong earthquake. Now, usually you can go to these charts and check out the shake maps. It gives you an idea of the little aftershocks around it. Um, what's going on in that area in the past couple weeks or even a month, depending on the settings. But nonetheless, guys, another strong quake has just struck, um, on the ring of fire. Even though you see that fall line that comes this way. This is still within that area all along the uh, Pacific Ocean here. We call that the Ring of Fire. And really quick, I'll jump into the settings and show you what we've seen as far as today. Or over the last seven days, 4.5 magnitudes. And once again, guys, you just see all this action going on here. 4.5 and higher over the last seven days. We got this one to include now. Our uh, southeast of Easter Island, or they call it Esther Island. Uh, one or the other, I guess that really doesn't make a difference here. But um, I just want you to, once again, pay attention. There is a lot of uh, uh, shaking going on in Anchorage in that area. But uh, these are the 4.5s and higher. So they've been having a lot of uh, smaller aftershocks here. That's why they're not showing up. But again, the point I keep trying to make is that you see all these earthquakes here on the west. You start seeing them down in South America. Even coming in towards like the... Uh, beginning of the Caribbean and Mexico areas by Cancun. And then we have one here that was meet, uh, met right at the fault lines, but then we have the gap along the west side of the U.S. So basically the question is, when is that gap going to get filled? It's going to happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Um, and you know what? A lot of people, they're claiming they're having dreams and this and that, that they're seeing waves and the, the shaking and, like, the sponging of the land. You know, I've heard about this for a couple of years now. I don't really try to get into that type of stuff, even though maybe some of those stories are interesting and worth talking about. But I like to stick to the data and the facts here, and the facts are the west side of the Pacific Ring is completely active um, on a daily basis now, whether it be volcanoes or earthquakes. And then as we move into the east side of the Pacific Ocean, things calm down a little bit. But that is making things a lot more scary for the California region. And not just California. We're talking uh, Oregon and Washington as well. Because we need to keep an eye on this fault line, especially. This fault line right here that runs like a set of steps. Constantly talking about this fault line. This is the fault line that is said to be the one that may produce the big one. So, again, not trying to tell anyone that it's coming anytime soon. I don't make predictions like that. All I'm showing you is the data and the fact that we are having a little bit of a skippage going on here. It kind of seems like these earthquakes happen. They make their way up to Anchorage. We have a little bit of uh, pressure flow that comes down, and we'll see some small quakes in California, but nothing matching these really lately. So, when is that time going to come, guys? Could it be an East, Qu an East Coast quake? That uh, catches us all by surprise while we're waiting for this one. Who knows? But what I do know is the Ring of Fire is certainly uh, producing a lot of action. It has been over the last couple of years. And I just wanted to point this quake out to you guys. This was uh, just over an hour ago, southeast of Esther Island. And then here on Google Earth, I pulled it up really quick just so we can get an idea of how close to the island it actually was. Not too close, but 
close enough to where that was their uh, landmark of determining where this quake was. So here is the epicenter of the quake right here. And then as we back out, we can see Esther Island is way up here to the uh, southeast of the quake. Or southwest of the quake, rather. Sorry about that. And here's that island there. So, all right, that's that quick video for now. I got something special for you guys coming up in about an hour. I will have that done. Um, and we can thank Caroline for this one. This is a good one, guys. You're going to like this. Uh, but other than that, um, everyone stay safe. Another Pacific Ring of Fire quake. How many more are we going to get? before it starts affecting our homes, people, especially those that live in the U.S. I know I got people out there that live all over different countries, but uh, the Ring of Fire is certainly a topic of conversation lately. All right, guys, I'll be back soon. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.